So, um, it's Black History Month, and my name's Fagan Debonair. I'm the Member of Parliament for Bristol, Bristol West, and I'm the first MP of Bristol West uh, to be from Black, Asian, or other ethnic minority community. So I'm choosing to spend Black History Month day to day uh, by going around all the seven saints of St Paul's. There are seven murals of seven key figures in St Paul's. This is the first one. This is Audley Evans. And Audley was a really key figure in the Bristol bus boycott and also helped to set up St Paul's Carnival. There's loads more about him, so I'm going to post on here a link to the app with more information. So this one's exciting. Um, this is Owen Henry. And amongst many other things, like being part of the Bristol Bus Boycott, Owen Henry started the first black-led housing association, United, which is now called United Communities, which I did not know, and I actually have quite a lot to do with United Communities Housing Association. So this is a real connection for me, of someone who campaigned on housing as well as equal rights generally, Owen Henry. So, this is Dolores. This is Dolores Campbell. She was originally a nurse, but as you can possibly guess from the picture, she was also a foster carer, loved by many. And here she is, you know, I don't think it's an, ex it's an accident that the paperwork, Michelle Curtis and the paperwork, puts, uh, Papersmith, sorry, puts Laura's on Campbell Street, which is where we are in St Paul's. This is one of my favourites because it's just full of joy and you get a real sense of what a great foster parent Laura's must have been. As well as loads of other things. With all of these seven saints, there's a long list of their accomplishments. So this one's really, it's quite, it's got a topical note to it. Because Carmen Beckford um, was the first black woman in the Southwest to get an MBE in the early 80s, maybe 1982, something like that. And we're going to meet up with Roy shortly, Roy Hackett, who's also just got an MBE for his services to the community. So it feels like a nice connection because he's the last mural that we'll be visiting today. And Carmen was also a nurse and had a midwife, but also, I didn't know this until today, was Bristol's first ever race relations officer. So you just think how many young people who were, whose lives would have been changed by her because of the work that she did. So this is Clifford Drummond. And I've just learned. I mean, Clifford was involved in so many things. He was a businessman. Uh, he set up a travel agency helping people to visit their family members back home from former, their former countries of origin. Uh, I feel quite emotional about that actually. I, I, I'm the daughter of an immigrant and my dad had to wait a long time before he saw his parents again. It was a big deal. Travel was expensive in the 70s and 80s and Clifford, by setting up a travel agency, helped people to see their families again, which is amazing. But also, as an advisor, as an advice worker, he helped people, such as possibly some of the people in this picture, it's a really diverse group, help people when they first got to this country. Um, so people of Asian origin, of Caribbean origin, um, with their legal papers. And also he was a big part of a big case against um, a company whose workers had got asbestosis, who's got lungs with asbestos. He's one of the two that are still alive and we're about to go and meet the, the other one. Uh, Barbara was a social worker and uh, as you can, well, I think maybe you can tell from some of what's written up here that she says, I saw a group of black people doing something for themselves and I wanted to be part of that. Barbara is a big part of community life and Barbara's been really active in the elder support for, at the Malcolm X Centre, but so many other things and and just, I, this is another Another one of the things I love about this is, is Michelle Curtis and the Paintsmiths have made each and every one so special and so very beautiful. Um, so this is Barbara, and we're going to go now and meet Roy. I'm here with Roy Hackett. I mean, I'm a bit overawed because Roy is a friend and neighbour of mine, but also a big hero of so many people. And this year, Roy got an honour which I think is 
long overdue, actually, Roy. Uh, so tell me a bit about it. You got the MBE. Yes. What does that mean? What did you get it for? Do you want to say? I mean, I think there's the list is so long. What would you say it was for? I can't even remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't even remember. This can't even man, remember. this man. So he's number seven on our murals list because of the Bristol bus boy. Uh, so then, how did the boycott come about? Pardon? What What happened next? Where, where, where did the boycott come from? Who, whose idea was that? Well, matter of fact, I don't know who boycott, but I'm going to tell you what I told the yeah. people who pulled the boycott. Yeah. I went and said, a guy crying. Hmm. And I said, why are you crying? And he showed me the phone. He said, I get this phone, you know, to say to come and join and get an interview yeah. so that they can train me to be a driver, a conductor, a yeah. driver. I said, yeah, that's the rule. Yeah. You break it? Yeah. No, they said they didn't want that. I said, the whole is on. Didn't you? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording. We're going, we're going up your bus, please. Yeah. And I said, um, who's in charge here? I'm going to tell you. I said, can you get that for me? Yeah. Get that. When she came, I said, well, my friend here is in the car. He knows my partner. Yeah. Why well, don't you do something like that? He said, well, I told him. I said, told him? He said he didn't come here. But I know what I'm saying. Yeah. I said, well, tell him what I'm then. Yeah. He said, we're not. Don't read a few blocks. I said, what about me? He said, what about you? I said, I'm not white. Will you interview me? Yeah. She said, it's entirely up to you. I said, when you do the job, yeah. this is the same person yeah. going to make you do this. Because there's nothing here near color bar. Yeah. And nothing here said they want white, yeah. pink, Chinese. He said, who are you? I said, lady, when you lose your job, you have to my name. And she went inside. I don't know what she phone on, phone on, phone on, phone. And she come back out and he said, uh, um, <clears throat> young man, I'm going to try this one. I said, thank you very much. That's all you have to say. I'll try. Yeah. He might fail in the interview. Yeah. And your job is safe. But if he don't fail and he don't get the job, your job is not safe. But I was a hack to book ever since I was tiny. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Long before coming to England, I said to England when I was 24. And she said, um, can you let me have him now? I said, of course. I said, and don't forget, you must come up say when you start. <laughs> he said, what about if you don't? If you don't get it through the interview, I said, then I taught him. And he never failed one. Good for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so one last thing, Roy. Yeah. What would you say to the activists of today, the young people like you were then? What would you say to the young activists today? I would say, don't be vicious to them. Talk to them kindly, yeah. as if they are human. Yeah. And talk to them with manners. Yeah. But one thing you must tell them, if you acted wrong with me, yeah. then you have no job. Yeah. But you're going to ask them, who are you? Yeah. You say, after you lost your job, you come and ask me. I said, that's what I use. Yeah. <laughs>